It was a calm Swiss summer night in July 2021. Kids were sleeping and I was slowly winding down. An evening like many others, he would say, until the clock struck midnight. The day of zoom ups had come. On July 21st, Zoom released version 5.7.3 and with it, the new Zoom Apps feature. What is this? I ask myself. Zoom already have an app marketplace, even if honestly I've never used it. So I went to sleep and a magical world of apps populated my dreams that night. The next day I woke up with a firm intention to find out more about the new Zoom Apps. I already had a couple of Zoom calls scheduled for that morning, so I thought I would dial in a couple of minutes in advance to see what's new in the latest Zoom release. But big deception. The company I work for, a large corporation, had not updated Zoom. No apps for me. Yet, I thought. But I could not give up so easily. So after work, I borrowed my wife's private MacBook Pro, where she has a free Zoom account. And boom, more than 50 Zoom apps were at the tips of my fingers. I started hearing a little voice telling me, go, 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 install them all. Add authorized try, add authorized try, add authorized try. But suddenly, stop it. A candid but firm voice was trying to calm down my excitement. Are you sure you want to install them all? Are you sure Zoom apps are going to make your meetings more effective? What happens if you install the apps, but other participants in the call don't? What if this, what if that, what if this, what if that? So I created a meeting and logged in as a host from the MacBook Pro, where I have the Zoom apps installed, and as a participant with no Zoom apps from PC. And damn, the little angel was right. As a host, if I send an app, I don't know whether participants can use it or not. So I realized that by using apps, I could actually exclude some participants from the activity and frustrate them. Oh, come on, don't worry. You'll see that everyone will soon install the apps. Go, 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 keep installing them, said the little devil. Yeah, little devil, you're right. Why the hell would people not want to install Zoom apps? So I patiently started waiting for my company to install the Zoom apps. And in the meantime, I used my wife's MacBook Pro to add authorized try. Add authorized try. Add authorized try. Add o Wait a second. What am I authorizing here? The staff may be able to view the following information for all participants who join Zoom meetings, webinar messages, or calls with a user who has authorized the app. The app can view this information at any time, including outside a Zoom experience. Registration information, name and contact information, responses to registration questions and other registration information, content generated in Zoom products, and so on. Ah, so if I'm using an app, that app will get all this data. Whatever piece of software is used, especially in large companies, needs to go through an approval process. And companies are very sensitive about the data they're sharing and the security. Maybe now I start to understand why my company has not released the Zoom apps yet. So I decide to run a poll on the LinkedIn Zoom community, where I ask, has your company allowed the use of Zoom apps? And I want to understand whether there is a difference between small, medium and large companies. In a little more than four days, I received 28 votes. 46% relate to small, medium companies and 54% to large companies. The number of votes is still small to draw solid conclusions. However, the poll indicates that especially in large companies, Zoom apps have not yet been installed. Is it just a matter of time? I think there are three potential scenarios. In the first one, all companies will allow the installation of Zoom apps. In the second scenario, at least some companies will not allow the use of Zoom apps at all. In the third scenario, which I think is the most probable, some companies will allow the use of all Zoom apps, whereas other companies will only allow the use of some apps. And those apps will probably be the ones that are related to software that is already approved and used by the company. Let's take for example Miro. If the company has a license for Miro and employees are already using it outside of Zoom, then the Miro app will probably be approved. So what does it mean in terms of use? I see no big issue for running meetings within the same company that has the same policy and where every employee will be able to install the same apps. Instead, I see a problem for meeting across different companies, where one company may have some apps installed and the other may or may not have the same apps. So it will be best practice to always check in advance with your counterpart whether they can install the app that you want to use. We're only at the start of Zoom apps and I'm just a Zoom user who's making YouTube videos and is trying to reach 1000 subscribers. I'm sure Zoom has thought about it. Have they?